Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Foreman. Today we have Jake Sachs with us, The Real Marketing Manager. And we also have the Skin Dog Surfboards OVA that we just got back from Puerto Rico surfing with this board. This is a 7.6. Uh, this board is also available in 7.0 and 8.0. So the size range goes 7.0, 7.6, Man, we had a really good time surfing this board. So first we're gonna jump into the dimensions. And for those of you that don't know, Skin Dog is Ben Skinner's surfboard brand uh, made in Thunderbolt construction. And the OVA is Thunderbolt red construction, which doesn't mean the board is red. It just means that it's all fiberglass layup. There's no carbon in the layup, all right? So all fiberglass layup, red Thunderbolt construction, 7, 6, 22 and a quarter by three, 53 liters on the dot. Uh, and just to give you uh, some stats on Jake and I, I'm 6'2", about 200 pounds, maybe a little over after this trip, a lot of uh, empanadas. So Jake, what's your, what are your dimensions and volume? Dimensions, 5'10", by 160. Okay. So is your is your is that a dimension? Is, liters, is 160 a dimension or is 160? That's your volume, bro. That's, that's your volume. volume. That's my volume. All right. So let's talk about. Uh, we chose the 76, right? Because they're yep. 70, 76, 80. We're going to Puerto Rico. There's waves on tap like the whole trip. We just yep. like. All right. So we're going to review this board. Let's just take the middle one, yep. right? So uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the sizing of this board to the surfer and like kind of what's the right yeah. size, you know? Yeah. Cause at 200 pounds, 53 liters, like I had no problem duck diving it. Right. I mean, like I had to put it down, right? It wasn't like I was duck diving 40 liters, but, yeah. but I could get it under the water and like, you know, with like more serious surf, like make my way out, like right. through the waves. Like, and I struggled to duck dive it okay. a little bit. Uh, definitely had to get way up on the nose to punch it through. There's uh -huh. a lot of volume in the nose on this one. Windy today. Like a lot of volume on the nose nose right um so trying to duck dive it in anything like open water kind of waves with power yeah uh, struggled a little bit and then also uh, this one was uh for open water seven six was a little slower as well compared so, to something like a, a like, long like an eight hour or a nine yeah or like that. yeah or a long board yeah um, yeah so uh the the combination i would probably go with a, the seven oh um, okay for the duck dive ability or the 80 if I really wanted to be able to book it in between sets and everything. Okay. Uh, but it it was possible to duck dive it yeah. when you really needed to. Yeah. So. so that's actually a good point. Like, you know, they they make the different sizes and like kind of tune in on those sizes like kind of per the surfing yeah. that you're yeah. going to do. Yeah, um exactly. you know, my size I could ride all I, I all would three. ride all three yeah. of them. Um, but if you start getting lighter then you want to be selective as far as like what which one you're getting and the and the conditions that you're putting it in. Um let's talk about uh Performance. I mean, we surfed this board in a ton of different conditions. I mean, what do you think the smallest was that we surfed this board? We probably had some some waist waist to chest. Okay. High, high waves when like really lined up, real mm -hmm. glassy, uh, and it was a blast in those. I mean, you could surf it really small and it would yeah. get up and go. Uh, and then we. And then on the it, on the yeah. bigger size, like on the bigger sets, like what would you say the bigger sets were? Head and a half, maybe. Okay. Uh, Maybe double overhead on some of your waves. There were oh. pretty. There were some intense waves that we rode on this thing. We yeah. kind of put it through its paces uh, and tried to really figure out like fins and then how to ride it in the different situations. Like you were getting those sick cheater fives, uh, where you know you were way up on the nose and it held for the whole length of the wave. I Even with the quad. Pretty, Even I was with pretty the quad surprised by that. Yeah. yeah to be able to get so far up on the nose and have it not spin out yep. oh, it was really impressive. It was cool. I mean, this thing had a lot of range wave-wise yep. as far as like the type of wave and uh, and then the height of the wave as well. Like we had the, like some like really slopey, like at the beginning of the trip, we had some pretty slopey like reef breaks. Yep. Uh, then we had some like kind of more pitchy, like kind of pointy reef breaks. Yep. And, uh, and on some of those days, on the smaller days, like we were sitting like, if you remember, we were like sitting like way inside under right. priority, like just racking yeah. up wave count. Yeah. And like, there were some like tiny some kind of, ones. I'd even say lower than waist yeah. high on, on some of them. And it would still go. So the thing that kind of stood out to me, uh, like right away is, is the range yep. on the board, um, is that you could like this thing, if you get it in the right size, like you could take it on a trip and like with a couple sets of fins, like ride it like for the whole trip, like yeah. in a really wide range of conditions. And then as far as uh, 
the maneuverability of the board, you know, it was really good, like really good turner, like really good drawn out turns. And uh, I think the fin setup really affected like how the type of turn that the board did. And yeah. then also like just the overall, like just performance and personality. Yeah, we really found the that the, the fin setup changed the feel of the board a ton. Like yep. a lot of boards, you switch the fins up and they're a little different. This one was almost like two separate boards with yep. different fins in it. Whereas the quad really lined up speedy down the line, really fast, um, perfect for barrels or steep sections. You could yep. just beat section after section. Uh, but when you went to throw uh, a turn in it or like a cutback to off the off the water, you wanted that a two plus one. Yeah. And it was just magic. Uh, in those cutbacks with the two plus one, whereas the quad felt a little sticky on the cutback for that. So that was cool to see that you could take this on a trip, have such a wide range of wave sizes, but then also switch up the, the fin setup and get different feels uh, for different wave styles as well. Yeah. yeah, I think, you know, I think a lot of people would get a board like this and <clears throat> probably just choose their preferred fin setup and right. never even switch it yeah. ever. Yeah. You know, maybe they would do the two plus one and, and rock the center fin forward and back, like yeah. to get loose or yeah, like- we did that a little bit Or too. tighten it yeah. up. But, you know, most people are gonna get like a quad and just go with it yeah. or a two plus one and just go with it and a board like this. But I would definitely say for this board, it is two completely different boards. Totally. And it really tunes it into the conditions. Like on those more intense days that were like just kind of hammering, yeah. like the quad was awesome. Like it was yeah. really, really confident on late drops. It was really confident like high up on the wall of the wave. Yeah. And, and, and instant speed too. Instant speed, like Boom. making sections. I felt that same thing that you were talking about that like wrapping it back into the pocket was a little bit stiff yeah. with the quad, but there was so much like confidence and grip on the wall and speed yep. on the wall that like it was really good like for that type of wave. We switched it, the session, like you rode a two plus one earlier Gosh, in the trip. Yeah. I never rode it on that day. Like I, I was riding the, the longboard that we were testing. Yeah. And uh, I went to the two plus one that evening uh, later on in the trip. And like, that was literally one of the biggest changes that I've experienced yeah. in a board, like changing fins. It went from like not really wrapping all that well back into the pocket to just like, owning that yeah, type I of turn. Yeah, like, it's magic It's on just the absolutely yeah. magic, you yeah. know? And so um, I would definitely recommend like, you know, carrying, you know, g getting both sets of fins for it and, totally. and using it, you know, using it with both sets of fins. Like we went with this, it's got FCS boxes for the quads or for the side bites. And then it's got a, you know, a standard uh, longboard box in the center. Uh, we went with the FCS Firewire Dan Man mm -hmm. fins for the quads. And then for the two plus one, we did the Skin Dog FCS side bites, which are bigger. Yep. And then uh, it's like a seven inch center fin. And when you look yeah. at that setup, like I remember you and I were looking at it, it looks like a lot of fin. Yeah, we were like, whoa, that's gonna be too much. Yeah, but it looked like real, uh, just the look of it, it looked over fin, but it didn't feel. No, no it felt great. Yeah, over and fin. then moving, if it, if it does feel a little sticky, moving that center fin just a little bit farther forward yep. helped loosen up the tail a little bit. I remember on that first session, we pulled it a little bit farther forward. Yep. And then when we were riding it in some bigger stuff, we slide, slid it back. Slide it back just yeah, to just a, just a get the bit. board to track yeah. a little bit, uh, really a little bit more confidently. So that, confidently, so that was, uh, that was cool. That was a really interesting setup and just experience, you know what I mean? Like just feeling like how different this board can feel like with those uh, fin setups. What other, like in surfing this board, like what else did you feel helped? Yeah, it was really, performance? really interesting. I felt like when you paddled it, cheating forward a bit really helped. There's so much volume up here under your chest. Okay. And it's easy to get, if you're back on the board, it's easy to get the nose too far up and it just wouldn't get down into the wave yep. quite as well. Yep. So you could cheat really far forward and then it would drop in and just, when it once it got into the wave, it would just glide right onto the rail. Okay. Um, but So I would definitely say, scoot forward a little bit, especially on the smaller gutless waves. Yep, yep. Uh, and then when it got bigger, if you wanted to kind of like stall it a little bit, you could cheat back, back on it. it a little bit yep. and then the drop wouldn't be quite as extreme. And uh, you kind of like 
time the wave that way from scooting up or back a little bit. So definitely a, a lot of range in how this board can feel for travel. It's perfect. You yeah. Know, you really can ride it in yeah. all kinds of conditions. And you mentioned the uh, the Cheater 5s on it. Yeah, yeah. This thing just like wills you to the front of the board. Yeah, it's true. You know, yeah. like when we were waxing it, like uh, you were waxing this one and you're like, where should I stop? Yeah. Like, should I stop here and leave the logo out of the wax? Yeah. I'm like, no, go in like in front of the logo. And then you went all the way to the nose <laughs> on the wax. I was like, whoa, dude, what are you doing with all the wax up there? But it ended up like there was so much good ride time up in this area of the yeah. board. I was stoked that it was waxed up there. Um, but the, for people that want to do a Cheater 5, that's cool. But I think also like an important thing to point out is like how big the sweet spot is yeah. on this board. Because you could literally be from like here to here and, and the board works, works yeah. you know, and doesn't like nose dive or pop a wheelie or like anything that's gonna like mess up the, um, like the overall wave. Yeah, and you can pump it from up front too. Correct. You pump and then step back on it to throw your cut back. Yeah, and, yeah, so, you know, in a sense it was forgiving yeah. that you could stand on it anywhere, but also like from a performance standpoint or from a style standpoint, like you could be literally anywhere on the board and it worked. Let's talk about the construction, because I think the Thunderbolt in this board is um, is something worth mentioning. You know, Thunderbolt, it's an epoxy resin construction, yeah. but you know, a lot of people take epoxy as being stiff right. or chattery, which is a lot of times a mistake, you know, because they're basing it on the, you know, they think anything epoxy, the epoxy is just the liquid, right? Yeah. The resin. But um, this board, the Thunderbolts, like have, I, I feel have really good flex, like yeah. good, like bend and rebound and out of the turns. Weight to them too. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The red, like it's it's you know it's lighter than like a heavy like poly board. Yeah. Um, but it's not like ultra light. Yeah. Like because we had some decent windy days yeah. and like like actually the, we had some devil wind actually on kind of right. coming up into the face like at you on those bigger days like with juice and this thing handled it. Cut the chop. Yeah. yeah it goes it goes right through it. A lot of that's just the design of the board and the rails and the bottom yeah. and everything, but also the weight and and. Um, the materials inside the board. Uh, so I, I think the Thunderbolt's got really good like flex and rebound mm -hmm. in this board, but in, in all the Thunderbolts I've tried. Um, the other thing that kind of blew me away is one of the waves that we surfed at was really shallow. Yeah. And it had like these crazy like coral features like underneath you and you would get like sucked up onto the shallow part when you were waiting for the wave. Right. And all of a sudden the water would drain out and you were just like dry docked yep. tail first on a coral head. Like it's the worst sound and feeling ever it's like gong yeah. like on the tail <laughs> and a couple times i landed on this uh, this is obviously a brand new board we left the uh the test board you know down where we were staying i mean i i was expecting the whole tail to be completely split open and it was literally just like paint nicks just chipped yeah, in the back chips. of the it wasn't yeah. even chips yeah. it was like just nicks yeah. like and and so it didn't even need repair which like a I think I did that like three separate times in one whole day <laughs> right. and I was expecting the tail to be completely butterflied open and uh, like it was, fine. it was totally fine. I didn't even have to use sandpaper on it. Yeah. It was like good to go. So yeah, that was pretty impressive. Yeah. I thought that that was a really good, especially like when you're talking about a sharp edge back here and like that's going to be more susceptible when like yeah. when you have 200 pounds of weight like sitting on it, like just grinding on the like reef because <laughs> you don't want to get off the board at that point. <laughs> you don't want to sacrifice yourself. So. Uh, I thought that that was uh, I thought that that was really cool, too. Yeah, but I mean overall, like performance-wise, like really impressed. Range-wise, equally as impressed. Like yeah. just a different amount of waves that you can surf on it, and like you know what we said, like the personality and the performance of the board, like switching the fins up, I thought was super cool. It just gives you even more, um, even more range, and uh, and then also just like I don't know, like the di the cool and different things you can do yeah. on on the board. It was just really really fun. I had a I had a great time on it, and. Uh, and I'm stoked, like, when we go back down there to uh, to surf it more. more I mean, it's like, you know, yeah. if it was a dog, I would have brought it home. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I was like, no way, I'm going to surf this thing for sure more. Because, uh, like, you know, on the right ways and the right days, it's, like, it's it's magic for sure. Um, any closing comments on your side? No, yeah, it was really, really sick. I like that they have the 7.0, uh, the 7.6, and the 8.0, too, so you can kind of scale it to your weight mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. as well and get those same feelings uh, with you know with a wide variety of boards and be able to travel with it so super stoked on it so that wraps up everything on the skin dog ova if you have any questions about the ova or would like to place an order for one you can always give us a call at the shop 252-987-6000 or look us up online realwatersports.com forward slash surfing and for those of you that can't get enough of these photos and 
video clips of us in Puerto Rico, us mere mortal uh, professional recreational surfers getting our shred on in Puerto Rico and you want to go down there yourself, you can always book yourself a week at the Real House Villa Sessions by uh, calling those same number and that same website. And it's epic. Yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in. Jake, uh, thanks for, I mean, grinding it out and going on the trip. Oh yeah. You know, because it was yeah. tough, it was tough work. <laughs> and again, uh, thanks everyone and uh, it's over time. <laughs>